Well, one of the programs that we have at Mass and Mass Freedom is called the Straight Path. It addresses the issue of dealing with young people by understanding that young people need to be heard. Often, a lot of times, we deal with young people and we don't, we're not listening. And, you know, and we're not providing a forum for them to be able to participate and listen. Young now let's, uh, let's, go, let's go back, because we, we looked at, at the Gallup study mm -hmm. that the big population of Muslims in America is 18 to 29. Mm -hmm. right, so that population, where are they? How are you engaging them? Well, we're engaging them simply through our Straight Path program, which uh, consists of programs like uh, the whole concept of involving young people around the idea of civic engagement. In addition to civic engagement, we're also working with them in terms of the idea of leadership, because you know, that's important, and also the idea of understanding how to address social and economic injustice. Right. They now, are now, real, you, and you guys, have passions about now, those things. Now, we talked about the scholarly thing. Now, we have a young um, American mm -hmm. uh, from Indiana, mm -hmm. Indiana, no, Kansas City, mm -hmm. uh, Oklahoma City, your man, uh, Sohaib Webb. Okay. He's, I know he He's did part of the Straight Path pro program. Okay, tell because, me. Because young people can identify with Sahib. Sahib understands. He knows, the, he He's understands a, the lexicon of, of America. He doesn't speak English, he speaks American. Right. Therefore, he knows that, you know, uh, 50 cents not changed from the 7-Eleven and uh, Little Kim is a Korean restaurant and Usher's not going to take you to your seat. You know, these are the kind of things, and, and I, I know that sounds silly, but if you're not talking, and no, the other the, thing. No, by the way, if, if, if you don't know that Usher <laughs> is not somebody going to take you to your seat, uh, you can Google him. After this yeah, show. absolutely. Uh, what else are we doing? Uh, we got straight path, and and I think so. Hey, well, this issue of scholarship, saying what Islam says, and Ibrahim Ibrahim Rimi is doing a nonviolent academy, showing how for the civil rights movement, and there's a history in America. Ibrahim Rimi of, yeah, is is, it, is part it, of mass freedom. Mass freedom, yeah. But there's a history of religiosity that deals with the, making social changes in America and social changes throughout the world by using nonviolent techniques. What are those techniques? teach people, train people, and empower them to move forward. What are we doing, because you talked about violent and criminal behavior. Uh, what's happening between law enforcement and <laughs> the American Muslim population? So what MPAC is doing similar to what uh, Mahdi, Brother Mahdi I just mentioned before was grassroots work with civic engagement and empowerment so we can get constituents to talk to the lawmakers, to Congress, as well as to law enforcement. What we're doing as an organization directly with law enforcement is sitting down and actually having meetings, including the attorney general himself, mm -hmm. and talking about the guidelines and hitting from a number of different angles why this is not only unconstitutional, but bad policy. What's, not, what's unconstitutional? Well, the fact that the guidelines themselves, they were so broad brush that what it ends up doing is criminalizing free speech. Oh, I, there was a case, uh, the Supreme Court with David Cole, they were talking about That's anybody a, who gives one. any kind of support to an organization or deemed. even informants for that matter mm. that's the other issue and that's one of the big things that we're really focusing on right now is to change the guidelines that govern informants because what they are doing right now in effect is criminalizing free speech in many ways and we can't have that we need to be comfortable to have the free space within our mosque to discuss the issues that are affecting our communities well, but when we're scared I about guess. informants I, well, we I, can't I, do well, it I can tell you right now I I know very little about a lot of these movements yeah. And their websites and so on, because I'm not. I, I'm afraid if I go online, that when they look at my computer when I come in the country, they're gonna say, "Well, Johari's been to all these radical websites." Mm -hmm. So if they give you a computer, oh, back. if I give yeah. my computer back, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. like took it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, Maddie, thank you so much. Whenever, I, whenever I have that problem, I always call Maddie Bray. <laughs> Alejandro, I may be calling you too. Uh, but Sister Doctor Sadia, what's Sadia. going on? Um, the issue is multifaceted, as we talk about Mahdi, and and also you have talked about this. But like I keep going back to the foreign policy. Come issue. on. But what I'm, I want to say is the leaders and the disconnect between the leadership and the youth. Oh. At the at the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the way he did it was he engaged the youth, no matter how young they were. So if the leaders, whether they are those in the mosque, they are the parents or in the community activists 
they would engage the youth and they should make do it. So make what are you doing in the Somali community? What we're doing is we're not asking web to uh, so help to come or anything mm -hmm. because we oh. have a Somali Americans who were born here. Mm. So he was born who, here. Who, who not, but they're not interested. But yeah, yeah they want their own they, homeboys. They yeah, 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 yeah. They, they're interested because we were planning to have this conference which is going to take place in July 31st, August 1st, which is the second Somali Diaspora Youth Conference. We had the first one last year at the same time. The youth were telling us the other night that we're interested Somalis who, are, who care about our problems inside Somalia because these people are so connected to the homeland that they're not really so much worried about here because they have parents there. So their issues, a, even though a, identity a crisis, mm -hmm. violence, community. yes. Yeah. Again, also there is a humanitarian crisis in Somalia. You have like 1.5 million internally displaced people, 3.8 million who are on the verge of starvation, people in refugee camps. So their concerns and worries are beyond the circles here where the m mainstream media spend so much time. So, and they want to have so you, people so looking beyond so that. So you, you've got a conference and an ongoing outreach to young Somalis to kind of help them help them find constructive ways to, to give support to the native land and the, their new home their adopted country or their native home because some of them are from here and indeed, that's the, indeed so you also have the Somali parents committee here in Virginia which also had conferences for the boys and the girls and you I were I part was, was of that right. one of the workshops uh, um, so it's we're doing a lot but uh, we don't hear but again, really. Uh, this is the challenge. But the funding I mean, is. But the greatest see, thing about this show is that you guys are on here to say to the people in the audience that Muslims aren't sitting on their hands and waiting for for a government informant or for a tragedy to happen. That no, we're are we, no, are we monolithic? We're monotheistic, but we're not a monolithic. Yeah, so, she, so what she's really saying is really important. That one size does not fit all. There are many different approaches, approaches that yeah. we have to do to be yeah. able to go about this process. Indeed. What now? Yusuf, you and I have been involved in, in, in a process, and I like what Mandy said. He said, we're not listening. That most of the, the dialogue is coming from old people going to young people, telling them how they should feel. And a lot of times, I call it jihadi confusion, mm -hmm. after, after being in some focus groups, mm -hmm. that confused about, well, you know, how do I help my people and engage in that struggle for justice mm -hmm. the right way. I think, uh, the, I think what, what you're saying is on, on point is that uh, the jihadi confusion or the lack of answers mm. that we're having in our community is detrimental. Uh, I'm not saying that we don't have the answers. I'm saying they are there. And the problem is we don't have a movement towards that. So what we did, you know, with our focus group, you know, we brought people in um, from the DMV area, discussed things. I mean, we need to have more of those op what's open dialogue. What's the D mm. DMV area. <laughs> what is that? DC, Maryland, Virginia. Oh, okay. Oh, I, was I, I, I was the Department I, of I used Water to work vehicle. there, though. I used right. to work there. But the DMV, but DMV is what, uh -huh. um, I mean, the focus group is one thing. You're gonna, you can have it in your masajid, um, in your masjid. As long as the brother was saying, though, we also have to maintain our rights. And the fear that we have that the media has portrayed, it's, it's very difficult to go that route. Yeah, but I, I think part of what you're saying, though, and this idea is, is, is given it to us, that when you have that dis discussion mm -hmm. in broad daylight, mm -hmm. now we can challenge the, the open, broad daylight discussion about how we feel, but it's going to take people to have courage to stand up and say, I really feel, Definitely, yeah. I really feel something about what hap what's happening. I feel about our foreign policy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not afraid that I'll, that I'll be arrested for having an open discourse that, that moves it out of the shadows mm -hmm. where I, someone can... Also, all the action, the case in point, the Irvine 11. Now, uh, uh, they were able to address their concerns about Palestine, the Gaza issue, right, and right. they engaged in a form yeah, of civil disobedience. Uh, well, it wasn't even civil disobedience. I, 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 it's, I, it's still free, it's I, still free speech according to our laws. I, 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 <laughs> but, but, but my point I, well, is this, but these were young people who organized <laughs> yeah. to be able to do something, yes. you know, and maybe some people I, made a point. I, I, I really didn't like the way they did it. I understand understand what they did. Well, people don't like what, uh, it, what, uh, what, what the people did in, in North uh, Carolina uh, and from uh, A&T uh, at the lunch camp. I'm with you. I'm with you. Well, young well, people well, have well, to well, find their way, and, we, and sometimes uh, old school uh, folks get like, in the way. I, I was definitely an uh, old folk person As, as far as the sister was talking about, about the gap, the cultural gap, the, the religious gap, is huge. But there are places that we can go to, for example, um, for example, Mass, you know, has a lot of, uh, you know, projects 
going going well, towards us to help to yeah. help the youth. Yeah. Example is it Mom so so hey Web like uh, a Mugram Institute. They recently had um, a conference in Baltimore. A Mugram Institute is the largest Islamic student body in in the world, from what I understand. Or specific in the West, I'm sorry, right. excuse right. me, in the West. Well, now, I mean, they, they had Imam Sohe Web, they had basically people giving answers and it's specifically geared towards this specific mm -hmm. radicalization. Well, well, I, but yeah. Go ahead. at the same time, do we, you know, people still live in fear. You know, I'm your neighbor, you know what I mean? But you're not going to have that on the news. You're not going to have people showing the answers on the news. It's, well, it just doesn't happen for well, some reason. The thing that 